I'm Nazrul Idris and you are watching Make the Pitch, specially brought to you by MyEG. We are experiencing financial turmoil as we speak, but some of the Malaysia's own business owners are working really hard to turn their business ideas into reality. And some have experienced financial success. So what's their secret to their financial success? It should be passion, commitment and belief that their product and service really works. But just pure passion and commitment may not just cut it and therefore they need some cash injection to expand their business. So, for the next 10 episodes, some of these entrepreneurs will walk into this pitching arena to convince these investors and judges that their business is a money-making machine that works and gives handsome financial returns back to these investors. So, let's start watching them make the pitch. Our first entrepreneur is a well-known Malaysian celebrity, Hannah Tan. Hannah and her business partner, Brian Lu, will be pitching their iPhone portal idea and is seeking investors' help to turn their business dream into a reality. Hi, my name is Hannah Tan and my partner's name is Brian Lu and we represent a company called Scream for You Syndrome Berhad. Let me tell you how Hannah and me started and uh, decided to form this company. We've come across each other at many, many occasions, but we never really took the opportunity to introduce ourselves to one another. We were both having concurrent meetings in the same place. When I saw Hannah at the cafe, I waved at her. Then he smiled at me and then he waved and I said, mm, do I know that person? And Hannah walked over and introduced herself. And you go, oh, oh by the way, you didn't give me your name card the last time. That always works. So that's exactly what I did. And that's how the whole thing started. You know, one thing led to the other and we kept in contact for a few projects because coincidentally, you know, I'm doing software development IT and Brian also from the same academic background. So after years of knowing her, about December last year, we decided to form the company. First milestones for the company would be securing a major deal, a contract for the development of applications for iPad with a major publisher. What we did was, one of the first things that we wanted to do was to develop an application for Hannah. On that basis, we formed the company and because of that, Hannah got her own iPhone app and the publicity that was generated as a result of that was tremendous. One of the most difficult things was that Hannah was in Japan and I was in Kuala Lumpur. What other way could we do it with the geographical distance than Skype? Uh, Hannah? Hi, Ben. Hi. Remember I asked you about the figures on the entertainment industry? Have you got them for me? Basically, the premium content contributed to 288 million USD and it, all you need is just 1% of that. <laughs> wow, that's great. That's really great. And I remember Hannah and me spent months Skyping on the internet and we would check for 2-3 hours. the numbers and the papers. Correct. And... <laughs> and this went on for months because we wanted to be sure that if we form this company, it is something that's going to be good. From then on, we started brainstorming further and one of the things we did was that we wanted to do something for the creative industry. I was thinking, what if we could come out with a portal on web and on mobile that could help our local talents and all the creative community in general to monetize their content and create a passive stream of income from their IPs indefinitely for a long period of time. But more importantly, we would like to give back what has been given to us. We'd like everyone to benefit from our effort. I guess Brian and I both agree that whatever funding we get from this program would not just be funding for Scream for You or for the portal. The funders or whoever puts in money into this idea would actually be funding the dreams of many Malaysians. So it's just more than just us, it's not just about us. Judges. My name is Hannah and this is my partner Brian and we represent a company called Scream For You and uh, we are standing here before you today to share our enthusiasm about a pioneering idea which we believe will change many lives for the better. It's called Bite Me. And why we are so um, passionate about this project is because we strongly believe that this will empower many creative young Malaysians to create an additional stream of passive income for themselves. 
How we're going to do it is via a mobile portal, which will enable the content, uh, the monetization of user-generated content at any time, anywhere. And what this will encompass is actually a virtual content store where uh, we will leverage on the freemium business model, meaning we allow uh, content providers to upload, publish and distribute their content, original IPs, um, on a free platform. And when they make a sale, they make money. Um, the funding that we're looking at is 500,000 ringgit, uh, but we believe that we would be able to see a complete capital recovery within the first year and an ROI of more than 1,000% after capital recovery, after com uh, commercialization, of course. How do you make your, your money out of this? Is it through a share of the sales or upfront subscription fees? I mean, this has to be an ongoing sustainable business, right? That's right. How we intend to generate revenue is mm -hmm. from two uh, subsets. The first one would be from the download, the sale of content. Mm -hmm. The second would be through advertising. Say, for example, when um, someone buys a content for three ringgit, the telcos usually take 50%. Mm -hmm. Daylight robbery. <laughs> so you're taking 49. But, sorry. <laughs> you're taking 49%. The content providers will take 70% and we take the balance of 30%. So out of one download, which would be, say, priced at 3 ringgit, we would eventually take back 15% of that. You mentioned about the alternative payment gateway. Are you not thinking about using MyEG? <laughs> we would love to. <laughs> so you don't find an alternative one, but using the established existing one. That would be good for us if I were to sponsor you, for example. We would love to if, if, if that was accessible to us. Can I just check with you? Uh, sure. I trust this model is something new in this market. Has this model worked in any other markets before? Um, we're looking at not creating a, a totally new model altogether, but we're just leveraging on the concept which iTunes had. Um, you know, uh, aggregating different types of content and distributing it to the users paid as premium content. Mm. But the only thing was the, <coughs> the, the, the gap which they had was that if you're not an Apple user, you could not download uh, songs or whatever <coughs> content directly to your mobile phone. So it was restrict, uh, restricted to the mobile platform. And, and the unique selling proposition about the, the portal is uh, where we actually empower the subscribers or the consumers to be content providers. Usually it's just one end of the spectrum. You can only download. Mm. That's the only difference. Uh, who would be your target audience? Who would mm. be your, your primary target audience? Um, the urban uh, internet users, <coughs> people that have at least one account on Facebook, um, Friendster. Uh, estimate of your addressable market size? Yes, we do. Uh, about how many mil um, million potential eyeballs? <laughs> even if we target, we, we, we thought, even if we target 1% of the active Facebook population in Malaysia alone, in Malaysia, yeah. that will contribute to more than 100,000 uh, users. Mm. So considering that uh, it's a transaction-based model, yeah. you, you think that there will be enough volume of people out there that would actually buy um, perhaps uh, local independent songs uh, based on current uh, market sentiments. In addition to the transaction, uh, the fee that we charge for the song downloads, there are other modules within the portal that actually generates income. For example, mm -hmm. there's a module in there where we actually fund, we raise funds from the public mm -hmm. to actually provide these funds to aspiring uh, artists, artists so that they can use this fund to, for example, produce their own music video. So again, we take a percentage of the funds that's being generated by the portal. So it's not just transactions alone. But transaction makes up how many percent of your total revenue model? It would be the majority of the revenue, for sure. How, yeah, how big we do have majority? other... How many, sorry? How big yeah. the majority? Uh, I would think probably in the region of about 60 to as high as 70 percent. So it, 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 it lives or dies on a transaction model? Yes, basically. yes, in a way, yeah. yes. Have you done some pilot to show us that it's working? We haven't done a pilot per se, but we came out with a, a concept which we brought uh, to certain labels and uh, artists. So what I guess our competitive edge would be, number one, we have uh, access to the network of entertainers, uh, music labels, uh, artists, managers, who are interested to hop on uh, this bandwagon with us because it will um, also empower them to create passive streams of income in the long run. Uh, the second group would be our existing uh, database of creative, I would say creative youth, which we managed to gather through an exercise called the H-Factor Creative Youth Workshop, which we've run over four cities in Malaysia. And 
with that ready database, these talented young kids are just looking for an avenue to just monetize their content, get signed up by a label, or you know, if they're lucky, get an international contract somewhere. So, so we've got a, a base uh, to start. And uh, that's why we're confident because I come from um, an independent artist background and it's really difficult to cherry makan. So I understand <laughs> the challenges out there and this would change things for what the What about brand. leveraging on Hana Tan, the brand itself, to help promote? I would do that you are. with whatever means okay. I can, definitely. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, judges. Thank you for your time. Would her good looks and speaking ability charm our investors or would she have to go back empty-handed. I hope that uh, the uh, judges are convinced that we have a very good business plan and uh, hopefully with the funding that we get we are able to achieve the plan that we want. The results won't be announced until the end but unfortunately it looks like Hannah wouldn't know her fate as she had to leave. Hannah rushed off to the airport she has a flight to catch to US. Mm, so which means that she won't be joining us for the rest of the session? I don't think so because she's rushing off to US today. Did she say anything before she left? No, no, she was in a rush, so she didn't manage to say much. Hi, Anna. Hello, hey, I'm from Target. I'm from the airport side. Yes, I just got news from uh, Michelle that you have to leave in a hurry. And I'm really disappointed that you can't be with us uh, for the uh, results. Okay, uh, but in any case, uh, the show must go on. So, whatever it is, I will let you know the result. As long as you have the view of the Twin Towers, the, the value of that apartment, for, for example, will be so much different uh, than the one that is behind it. <laughs>